What we're going to do is focus on particular types of solutions called equilibria and classify them. Let's move to some definitions. An equilibrium is a solution that is fixed or constant in time. So in the continuous time dynamical system dx equals f of x, a point x equals a is an equilibrium if f of a, the right hand side, evaluated at the equilibrium is zero. That's a little bit different than what happens in discrete time, where if ex equals f of x, then x equals a is an equilibrium, a fixed solution, if f of a equals a. Now be very careful about this. These conditions are really different depending on whether you are in continuous or discrete time, but it's the same phenomenon in both cases. An equilibrium is a constant solution. Now, any given system can have multiple equilibria or none at all. Let's look at a few examples. In continuous time, consider dx equals sine of x. Where are the equilibria? It's where sine of x vanishes, and that happens at all integer multiples of pi. That means there are infinitely many equilibria in this continuous time system. But let's consider the discrete time analog, ex equals sine of x. Now we need to solve x equals sine of x, and that has but one solution, at x equals zero. That is the only equilibrium in the system. Okay, let's consider a different system. Let's look at dx equals 3x minus x squared minus 2. To find the equilibria there, we set the right-hand side equal to 0. I can factor that as x minus 1 times x minus 2. That means we have equilibria at x equals 1 and x equals 2. Now, if I convert that to a discrete time system and consider ex equals 3x minus x squared minus 2, let's see, I can't factor that so easily. So I'm going to use the quadratic formula to solve x equals 3x minus x squared minus 2, and I get nothing. I, I get nothing. There are no solutions to that quadratic, and there's no equilibria. Now, wait a minute. What do I mean there's no solutions? There are always solutions to quadratic equations. The quadratic formula gives that. It's just in this case, they are not real solutions. They're complex. But don't we care about complex equilibria? Are there such things as imaginary equilibria? No, not in applied dynamical systems. Mathematicians do often care about complex valued dynamical systems, but that's not where we're going. It's kind of cool. It's very beautiful, but it's not what we care about in this, the real world. So no complex valued equilibria. Okay, let's move on to a simple example in continuous time. Here's a model of a buckling beam. The equation is dx dt equals c times x minus x cubed. Here x corresponds to the deflection in the center of a beam that's being uh, squeezed or loaded with a force that is some positive constant capital C. Given this model, let's solve for the equilibria dx dt is cx minus x cubed, set that equal to zero, solve that. Well, there's one solution at x equals zero, that's an equilibrium. There's another solution at x equals square root of c, that's an equilibrium. And there is one final solution at x equals minus square root of c. So this model has three equilibria. But what do they mean? What do they represent? Well, let's think. This is a model for a beam that is buckling under some force, some load, and we've got these three equilibria. The equilibrium at zero means that there is no deflection. It's not buckling at all. It's as if we're squeezing this beam and it's just not bending. Okay, what do the equilibria at plus or minus square root of c represent? That represents some, some deformation, some buckling in the beam, and the two different equilibria of equal and opposite signs means you're either buckling to the left or you're buckling to the right. And so in this system, if you start off at some initial condition, 
that is not one of these equilibria, what's going to happen? You're going to, you're just going to deform out to one of these two equilibria. Now, this is very interesting. These equilibria are exhibiting different qualitative features, different types of stability. Consider the equilibria at plus or minus square root of c. If you perturb away from that equilibrium a little bit and let it go, what happens? You move straight back to the nearby equilibrium. In this case, when nearby initial conditions converge back to your equilibrium, we call that a stable equilibrium. On the other hand, at x equals zero, that's an equilibrium. If you start there, you stay there. But if you perturb away from it, however slightly, you very rapidly rush away from it. You diverge away from that equilibrium long term. Such an equilibrium is called an unstable equilibrium. And this dichotomy between stable and unstable is going to animate the rest of this volume. Now, you have to be a little bit careful because this definition of stability is it's pretty imprecise. It's, it's kind of loose and qualitative. We're going to be able to be much more specific in future volumes. But even in this volume, it's not enough to say that every equilibrium is either stable or unstable. There are degenerate equilibria, which are neither. To see this in action, let's turn to linear systems. So in the continuous time case, we have dx equals lambda x, where lambda is a constant. In discrete time, it's ex equals lambda x, where lambda, again, is a constant. We know the explicit solutions to these. In continuous time, x of t is e to the lambda t times the initial condition x0. In discrete time, xn is lambda to the n times x0. Now, where are the equilibria in these systems? Well, in continuous time, setting the right-hand side equal to 0, the only solution is x equals 0, assuming that lambda is not 0. Whereas in discrete time, the only solution to ex equals lambda x equals x is, again, x equals 0, assuming that lambda is not equal to 1. Now, let's analyze the stabilities of these equilibria at zero in continuous and discrete time. Where do we have a stable equilibrium? Where nearby solution converges back to zero? In continuous time, it's where lambda is negative. And in discrete time, it's where lambda is less than one in absolute value. On the other hand, if we want to look at when we have unstable equilibria in continuous time, it's where lambda is positive. In discrete time, it's where lambda is bigger than 1 in absolute value. And the boundary between these two cases, this is where we have degenerate equilibria. In continuous time, lambda is 0. In discrete time, lambda is 1 in absolute value. That is plus or minus 1. Okay, so having seen equilibria, solutions that do not change, what really matters is that nearby solutions do change. And the equilibrium influences that change. And the two different possible modes of such influence give rise to stable and unstable equilibria. We've classified them in linear systems. Now it's time to classify them in nonlinear systems.